In 2014, Lucasfilm formally ended the existing Star Wars Expanded Universe, decanonizing nearly all non-movie material made between 1977 and 2014, placing it under the new Star Wars Legends moniker. Promised in return was a new, more cohesive Expanded Universe, which would closely tie in with a new series of movies and TV shows. Today, I'll evaluate the first almost half decade of the new Star Wars EU, breaking down what I see as the good and the bad, and in the end, coming to a conclusion. Today's video will be a bit more rambly than usual, so if you're looking for more of my standard scripted content, tune in tomorrow. So let's start with the negatives, because I'd like to end on a high note and be somewhat positive. My first major complaint about the new EU is less true great works. We haven't had our Thrawn trilogy yet, we haven't had our Knights of the Old Republic, we haven't had our Darth Bane series. In saying that, my main focus is on the Star Wars novels, I will talk about the Darth Vader comic line later, but although we've had good, and even at times very good, we haven't had anything truly phenomenal, anything which really captured the heart of Star Wars to me as a fan. Books like Inferno Squad, Bloodline, Thrawn and Thrawn Alliances, Lost Stars, have all been fun reads, but have lacked something that was very important to the Star Wars EU, the prior EU. A feeling of consequence, of taking even the main trilogy heroes and doing something important with them, something that would change their lives and change the universe. And I think the recent Thrawn Alliances is a great example of a book sort of just treading water, which is interesting and which does add to the lore, but which doesn't meaningfully change the universe, at least in my opinion. Now, there's an obvious reason for this. It's because of the more close integration with new movies and TV shows. Obviously, we know how the universe exists, at the beginning of episode 7, so writers are certainly kept in a pretty small box with what they can do. They can't have a Yuuzhan Vong invasion, or a reborn Palpatine, because that stuff would have influenced episode 7 and the later episodes. And to me at least, that's why one of the greatest aspects of the new EU, the close integration with the movies, also holds it back in a pretty serious way. The new Jedi Order in Legends was 19 books long. Main characters die or be changed forever, while earlier stories, like Dark Empire, changed for example how Luke saw the Force. So this lack of consequence is definitely my biggest critique of the new EU, but with new post-Endor movies, I don't see how it's avoidable. I think it's fairly clear that whether Disney had bought Lucasfilm or George Lucas had created Episode 7, Legends was very close to getting a wipe either way. Lucas's early drafts for Episode 7 diverged wildly and in an irreconcilable way with the events of the novels and comics. I think the story group would have been smart to say this area will be covered mostly by movies, with perhaps only one or two comic books. This era, maybe the Old Republic era, will see the bulk of EU content. Obviously, they should have limited their post-OT content until after Episode 9, when the full picture of the universe was painted and they could figure out what they could reasonably get away with. After the sequel trilogy came out, there's no reason why they couldn't have went back and thrown in, say, a Thrawn Crisis. But now, because they've made so much meandering content, I just don't think it's possible. It's almost too much world building with not enough time given to actually think of the future, and I think the best example of that is the Aftermath trilogy, which for some reason decided that the Empire had to be totally destroyed in a year. The Aftermath trilogy basically removed an interesting enemy, the Empire, and tied up most of the OT's loose ends, and said basically, I guess the next two decades until Episode 7, nothing's gonna happen. If they had kept the Empire, they could have done something like an X-Wing series, which would have been fun without overly constraining what they could have done with the movies. That and the world building was jarring too, as it was so different than Legends, which saw prolonged conflict and arguably a more realistic end to the Empire. Things like the Dark Fleet trilogy or the Corellian trilogy also were fairly significant, but didn't overly impact the universe moving forward. They were more just fun adventures. I hope we get some of that in the new EU. Because we also got new heroes like Talon Card, Corrin Horn, Winter, Garmbel Iblis, Mara Jade, and whoever else, who not only supported our main heroes, but could even carry whole stories by themselves. 
With a few exceptions, I think the new EU really lacks exciting characters which have appeared in multiple works. However, one of the most serious issues with the new EU, and one you just can't hand wave away, is the lack of video game content. At one point, Star Wars video games were king, with RPGs like KOTOR, shooters like Republic Commando, strategy games like Empire at War, and a variety of other amazing games in almost every genre. Now, this issue extends before Disney bought Lucasfilm or Legends was ended, but we've got one major game since 2015, Star Wars Battlefront 2. Or at least that's the only major game which contributed to the lore or the plot of the universe. Now I had serious misgivings about that story, but I will say I did like how the EU was heavily integrated into the story itself. What I mean by that is we participated in Operation Cinder and we saw Ray Sloan. Video games are a great storytelling medium, and we only saw that integration sometimes in Legends, but at least we were getting fun games. We just need more in the current canon, and that means giving the license to not just EA, but other companies who can produce a variety of games. Now, this is a small one, but I believe we truly haven't had any great source book. Nerds like me love learning about spaceships and whatever else. Throw us a bone, even if it's just something like the Essential Guide to Warfare, which gave us ships like the Bellator or the Asserter, even though they never appeared significantly in materials. Just give us some lore. I'm sure it's coming, but the sooner the better. And those are the main negatives. Besides for the ending of the Galactic Civil War so early and the disarmament of the New Republic, I don't have too much issue with the actual story being told in the EU, but I think there are some serious, serious issues that will hopefully be sorted out. But let's now talk about positives, and the main thing for me is that there's no longer a tiered hierarchy of lore, and everything is treated basically the same, whether it's a comic book, a video game, or even a TV show. In the old EU, we had the Marvel Comics and the Daily Comics, which were basically outright ignored totally, unless they were canonized in another source, often a source book. We also have early books or less popular material, like the Dark Empire, which was mostly ignored. Palpatine returning to the galaxy and waging massive war should have had a serious impact on just the universe moving forward, but really it didn't. Hand in hand with that is the fact that EU is now much more connected with the movies. Not only moving forward, but remember too that much of the post-Endor content of Legends was made before the prequels, so the era was often treated incorrectly or largely ignored. I mean, for the longest time, no one knew exactly what the Clone Wars was, how the Republic fell, or what Anakin Skywalker's life before Darth Vader was like. Obviously now the prequels are out, and it seems like the story group is working much more closely together. We also have what I call more big quote unquote EU projects, basically things that aren't the main movies. I'm talking about the Star Wars anthology films, the Rebels TV show, which included of course Thrawn, Resistance, The Mandalorian, and it just shows no sign of slowing down. Besides for the Clone Wars, there wasn't much in the way of TV content for the old Star Wars, so this is good for me at least. And if the actors slash events tie into the movies even better. I said earlier that the new EU is still waiting its truly great and EU changing novel, but there haven't been as many bad works either. Like there hasn't been anything purely as bad as say Children of the Jedi or The Crystal Star, and I don't think any of the characters have been handled in really controversial ways. There hasn't been any death of Chewbacca or fall of Jason Solo or Luke turning to the dark side or Luke being cloned. They've really left the main characters alone to be handled in the movies. Again, kind of a bad thing, but it also means that no fans have been directly as angry, at least in my opinion, by the EU. And as I said, it's not like there haven't been great stories. The two Thrawn books, Lost Stars, Inferno Squad, at times the Aftermath trilogy, and I've heard the Vader line has been almost totally amazing, although I personally haven't had time to read every comic. However, I think the biggest saving grace of the new EU is the fact that things are still very, very early on. We're not even really five years into the expanded universe. 
and most of the storytelling seems concentrated in the new movies. I truly think after episode 9 comes out, we'll learn more not only about the events after Endor, but I think we'll also see events after episode 9 appear in Expanded Universe works. Kind of like Endor was the starting point of a lot of the old EU content, I think episode 9 will be such that there will be lots of room for stories afterwards, especially where it's going to be a very long time until the next trilogy in the chronological Star Wars saga comes out. Those are the majority of my thoughts, but there's one thing I want to say. You can never remove legends. Decanonization only means that certain make-believe stories no longer contribute to a new make-believe stories. No one can remove the love you have for the EU. Disney didn't kill Star Wars Legends. Lucasfilm didn't kill Star Wars Legends. The books are still there. There are still plenty of us talking about them, and you can read them anytime you want. Also, if Lucasfilm did want to make new Star Wars movies, I don't think there was any other option. I think it's pretty clear that George would have ignored the EU based on what we've seen of his version for Episode 7, and Legends was basically fully fleshed out, or at least large portions of Legends were fully fleshed out. I think it's important to evaluate the new EU on its merits, not as a destroyer of something you cared about. When we do that evaluation, I think at least that the new EU hasn't been terrible, but it also hasn't been great. We've missed out on EU-centric video games, there hasn't been a KOTOR yet, or a Star Wars Jedi Knight yet, and there have also been serious issues with the world building, issues that someone like Timothy Zahn, if tasked with writing the Aftermath trilogy, could have avoided. That being said, there are also benefits. There haven't been any truly lore-breaking stories yet, there haven't been any truly terrible stories yet, at least in my opinion, and there have been several good and even great novels and comics. I like that stuff seems more closely integrated with the movie, there seems to be a greater focus on making a coherent lore, but I do miss the freedom that old writers used to have, not only in making individual stories, but not being tied down in changing the universe moving forward. I really hope after episode 9 comes out, and maybe in the subsequent 5 or so years, that the Star Wars Expanded Universe grows into something great and healthy. As for now, it's still pretty early, and I wouldn't go so far as saying that the new EU sucks. It needs work, yes, but it's good for what it is now, and some of the TV and movie content has been really extraordinary. Anyway guys, that is just my opinion. I would love to hear what you think. What do you think of the new Star Wars EU? Did you read Star Wars Legends before Disney wiped it? All of that and more, as well as any questions you'd like to ask me down in the comments. Now, today I'm not going to be doing a Q&A answer. Instead, I'd like to encourage you guys to check out a channel that I've been watching for the past week or so. I first stumbled across it on Reddit, and there was a post that sort of blew up. It's a channel called The Weefster 18, and it stars a very young boy with end-stage brain and spine cancer. His videos really touch me, and I think the recent support that he's been getting in the little community that he's grown have really added a lot to his lives, so it would mean a lot to me if some of you guys would go check out his videos and say hello. More than that, any of you guys that can be a consistent presence in this young man's life would really be appreciated and I just think seeing the same people again and again every day and building that sense of community has really done wonders for this young man who's dealing with a really tough thing. I don't want you to tell him I sent you. I don't want you guys to mention my name or anything like that. It would just mean a lot to me if you would go and show some support and check out his amazing drawings that he does. He's super talented, especially for a guy with almost no energy and dealing with something that's honestly a nightmare. Anyway, guys, until next time, may the force be with you.